was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a person is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. This reading is taken from John chapter 3. Friends, I've been thinking recently of the man who came to Jesus by night. His name was, of course, Nicodemus. And I have been wondering, what can have been going through Nicodemus' mind as he made his way along the dark streets, searching for the man he referred to as Rabbi? But first, let me tell you about Nicodemus. He was a Pharisee, a man devoted to the interpretation and the teaching of the law. And he was also a ruler of the Jews. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. Now this was a very elite group. It was the supreme court of the Jews and it had considerable powers. One of its duties was to examine and deal with anyone suspected of being a false prophet. Nicodemus referred to Jesus as rabbi. And in Judaism, a rabbi was a spiritual leader and a religious teacher. And Nicodemus thought of Jesus as a teacher come from God. This is all quite amazing because the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin, they would have viewed Jesus with great hostility and contempt. They saw Jesus as a blasphemer. And such a crime was in the eyes of the law, probably the worst in ancient Judaism. It was punishable by death. And strictly speaking, as a member of the Sanhedrin, it was Nicodemus bound in duty to deal with such lawbreakers. So all things considered, of all the people in Israel who would have wanted to see Jesus, Nicodemus was surely one of the most unlikely. But you know, that's just the thing. Sometimes it can be the most unlikely person who comes seeking Jesus. It has often been said, no one is so bad that they are outside God's love. But that was not the issue with Nicodemus. He was a religious man, a man of considerable means, highly influential, an expert in the scriptures. Judaism, you see, it's centered on the keeping of the law, the law of Moses. And it was Nicodemus' position to uphold that law. And Jesus would have been seen as a lawbreaker of the worst kind. And yet one night, Nicodemus set off in the dark to try and find that same Jesus. Miraculous, wasn't it? And in the same way, do we ever stop to consider how often we write people off? We might say, oh, so-and-so, they wouldn't be interested in anything to do with the gospel. They wouldn't be interested in anything to do with church or Christianity or salvation or anything like that. Nicodemus was probably the last person anyone would have thought of too. 
And that's in fact probably why he came at night. He was anxious not to be seen. But he still made the decision to come nevertheless looking for Jesus. Now there's something else I want to say. Nicodemus was by no means a rogue or a down and out. Do you know there's many as a person and they're, a, they're, they're down and out. And we know they need Christ. In fact I have heard many testimonies of people who were, who were rogues, who were down and out, who came to Christ and their lives were transformed by the power of God. But on the other hand, I have also known of many good, upright, often religious people, key people in society and in the community, but who have come to realise that there's just something missing in their lives. There's a gap that only Christ can fill. I wonder, did Nicodemus feel like that? Is that why he came seeking Jesus? Or maybe it was just through curiosity. He had seen what Jesus was able to do in the lives of others. The miracles he wrought, how lives had been changed as they encountered this man, this prophet from Nazareth, this stranger of Galilee, this teacher who went about doing good. Maybe he wondered, what is there about this man that crowds flock around him? He was curious. He was intrigued by it all. Of course, because of his position, he just couldn't walk up to Jesus and start talking to him and asking questions. And so, most likely, that's why he came at night. Perhaps he was anxious about what his fellow Sanhedrin would think. And he didn't want to become the subject of ridicule among his fellow Pharisees. No, he, he didn't want to risk that. So he came at night when it would have been much less obvious. But on the same subject, how many people would love to come to Jesus, but they're afraid about what people would think, that they would lose their, maybe their respect among their peers, or maybe their job is not congenial with Christianity. Or they're afraid of ridicule. And there are people who will be in a lost eternity, who will miss out on the offer of salvation and eternal life because they were afraid of what their friends or their workmates, what they would think. If they became a Christian, what would people think? On the other hand, there are people who just want to find salvation and hope and assurance of a home in heaven. And they want that more than anything else, no matter what anyone thinks. Those people will find what they're looking for. Nicodemus came seeking Jesus. And you know, many people come seeking Jesus, and they find in him what they're looking for. Nicodemus asked Jesus many questions. Now that's interesting. Because people of Nicodemus' standing, they generally didn't ask questions. They would have considered themselves above that. They answered questions. They set the rules. They examined others. But here is this powerful man, this aristocrat, this ruler of the Jews, a man devoted to the study and interpretation of Scripture. And here he is. And he's asking Jesus what it means to be born again. A devoted Jew would never have thought of, of such a thing. To them, being a good Jew was more than enough. And you know, there are so many people today who think that being a good person is enough. A good neighbour. Helpful in the community. Charitable and all the rest of it. But you know, that won't get us into heaven. Because Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 3, Truly, truly, I say to you, except a person is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. But what does it mean to be born again? It means to acknowledge before God that we are sinners, to confess our sins, to put our trust in Christ, and to follow him. Nicodemus did just that. And he went on to be a witness for Christ, right in the heart of government. 
Yes, he came to Jesus when it was dark and no one was about. But afterwards, he took a very public stand for Christ in the midst of the Sanhedrin. And even at the crucifixion, he was not afraid of, of people knowing he belonged to Christ and that he followed Christ. Do you know, friends, if we would be saved from a lost eternity, we must be prepared to follow Christ, no matter what anyone else thinks, and be prepared to take a stand for him in wherever we are. The chorus says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. May we follow Christ like Nicodemus, no matter what. And there's no turning back. Amen. Well, 
comes a sin with the wonder of love and the power of grace. The wonder of love and the power of grace. Let us pray. Dear God, we praise and worship you, loving and merciful God, the one who accepts us as we are. But we are all different in nature and personality, but all are sinners in your sight, in need of your great salvation and your forgiveness. We pray for all who do not know you as Saviour, for all who have no desire to come to you, and for those who are seeking. May they find in you what they are looking for. Forgive our sins and help us in our daily walk. May we ever seek the narrow way, the way that leads to life. We continue to remember all those, Lord, who are anxious, those who are concerned and those who fear the future. May they find in you their strength. And we ask this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, and to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.